Namaste programs and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and the rove through New Zealand continues with the final leg, leg three of the New Zealand historic flight in the DC-3. We're going from Nelson to Wellington International. Let's go. All right, let's get going. After yesterday saying I've got the hang of this plane, I've almost certainly jinxed myself. Let's see how we go. Let's see how it goes. Back wheel off. Now we've got to slide around. It's too twitchy. Way too twitchy this point. Without its back wheel. Maybe you're just meant to always hold back and it'll take off when the back wheel takes off. I don't know. Who knows? Not me. We want 20 degrees for 2 uh, 23. Come on, plane. Don't fight me. Fly. Fly, you fool. Boulder Bank. After lifting off from Nelson Airport, track the coastline to the northeast of the city to Boulder Bank, a, an eight-mile stretch of rocky beach that lies on the eastern margin of the Tisman Bee. The Tisman Bee. What's all that down there, huh? Squiggles. Some kind of colourful place. Interesting. Let's uh, just trim back a bit for now because we're struggling to gain any height for some reason. Oh, thank you, game. You tell me. You tell me all about it. Ruining my immersion. Look at the docks there. Photogrammetry ships. Excellent. Looking good, New Zealand. They've done a good job of this world update. It's not even the latest world update. So I'm going to do something after this uh, video, something I haven't done in 659 days or perhaps once or twice due to problems. I'm going to take a few days off. I'm off to the rugby. I'm off to the Rugby World Cup in Paris uh, tomorrow and I will be back in three or four days. So I was thinking maybe doing a bit of a real life rove taken some uh, footage of my trip to Paris and calling that the Rove so that I don't miss out any days but that's entirely situational I have no idea whether I'll be able to get an edit together whether there'll be enough Wi-Fi somewhere to, to upload so it probably won't happen and you know I'm just there to have a good time for the rugby so let's not worry about everything maybe take a few days off so there you go we'll be back later With the Rove, not sure. <laughs> not sure. I am pondering maybe just giving the Rove a break for a while. And maybe just doing the bush trips, not flying to each bush trip. Hard to tell. I have to say the South Island bush trip not working was a bit of a, an annoyance. Um, it's My goal was to get all 100% all the bush trips and now it can't even be done. 28 degrees for 148. Pepin Island. Continue to the northeast and fly over Pepin Island at the centre of which lies Stuart Hill, 13, 16 feet above sea level. And I'm also incredibly obsessed with Starfield right now if you've been watching the live streams. And I'd love to sort of maybe do a some kind of rove series in Starfield but um there's not a lot of flying around to different planets or whatnot and I guess I could do some planet surveys wandering around just chill roving looking around the place but I'm not sure that would it's certainly not going to be as interesting as this because this is uh you know this is real life this is based on the old real lives We'll ponder it. I'll ponder it over the weekend and we'll see, you know, what we come back with.
Oh, we've got this getting blown away by the wind nonsense again. It's a giant plane. Why are they so susceptible to gusts of wind? All right, I think we can trim back down now. Oh, I thought that was a dam. It's a sandbank. A couple of them. Interesting. A little uh, sandbank road to get to that island. This must be Pepin Island. Yeah, with its Stuart Hill. Yeah, we're at 3,000 feet. That hill will do almost certainly be 1,300, if not higher. Right, there we go. Time to turn it. 75 degrees for 130. Wangamoa from Pepin Island. Fly to the east-southeast and fly over Wangamoa, which lies just to the south of the confluence of the Wangamoa and Collins River. I guess it's a town. doesn't really say that, but we'll just assume it's a town. We will make that assumption. Look at those cliffs. Amazing. Here we go. More mines and quarries. Hidden amount behind the next range. The people can't see it from the ocean, but there it is. Digging up the world. Again, I assume once they're done with it, the trees will come back. And in a hundred years, there will be no evidence that we ever existed. And rightly so. And this little town just hidden amongst all of here as well. Oh, in a cute, in a cute. There we go, it must be Wanga Roar. Oh, uh, Wanga Mo wa What was I saying? Wanga Moa. It's Wanga Moa. 89 degrees for 4 minutes, 8 seconds. Uh, Kayuma Bay. Continue on an east-southeast course and sight Omahaki Stream. The stream flows into the Kayuma Bay, which is a southern component of Pelorus Sound. Fly over Kayuma Bay. Okay, I will. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. The gusts and constant... Look, there we go. Now we're going up. And then we're going down. Now we want to go left for some reason. Is it really that windy? Did they really set the bush trip to be super windy? That's the first one if it is. Maybe it's using live weather by accident. What else? These are all just theories. How could there be a bay four minutes this way? This mountain's up there. Is that the other side of the, the, the strait? We can have water uh, after this second or third ridge. And then those other mountains out there on the other side? Surely not. And there's this bay then. Look at all these hidden little farmhouses, farms, little villages maybe. Can't quite see any villages, but beautiful. Nestled amongst the mountains, in the valleys, along the rivers. Good stuff. Good stuff, I tell you. I concur. Oh, there's a bit of water over there, over there on the left. Maybe there will be. Maybe it's a big, big, long bay. Pushing all the way in here. A fjord, if you will. Perhaps. I'm not quite sure exactly the definition of a fjord. I'm sure they taught it, taught us to it when we were doing the Scandinavian bush trip, but uh, I, for one, have forgotten everything. So, yeah. I'll have to see if Slarty Bartfast knows anything about it. He was a fjord expert. I 
taking me a bay over this mountain. Is this what you're telling me? We've done two minutes 30 of four minutes eight seconds so yeah there's gonna have to be a bay here soon enough dude there it is there's water over here colorous sound i don't know what sounds are you know there's like a couple of places around the world that are sounds there it is there you go and all the mountains are actually on the water basically islands little town over there oh, dude turquoise water that's new usually the water's just not the right color have they added is it not rendering as water perhaps or have they finally figured out that they should take the uh the satellite images and actually overlay it on the water that you get the right colors I, i'm fond of mentioning this but there was a red lake on one of the trips i did it wasn't a red lake because the algorithm had just replaced it with blue water and it seems so obvious to me that you would just then also overlay the um i don't think this is rendering it as water they've just oh no we've got reflections from the yeah no so it must be yeah, they're putting the, the right colours over it. Sweet. I think it's the first time we've seen actual turquoise water. Bruh. Good work. So, uh, we're 75 degrees uh, for 3 minutes 47. A reset of the clock. Waikawa Bay. From Kayuma Bay, continue flying on an east-southeast course over a small stretch of land, then out over Moetapu Bay. Cross over a small peninsula and then pass over Queen Charlotte Sound. Gain a visual on the town of Waikawa and fly just to its north over Waikawa Bay. Yes, ma'am. Gonna be awesome. Look at this view. Oh, hang on. Look at this absolute amazing view. Let's get a nice angle here. Where's the best angle? Something like that, I reckon. I reckon. I'll level the plane up a bit now that I know how to switch to control plane view when we're in the, the drone. It's the letter C. Beautiful. What's that thing at the front of the plane? Some kind of... Don't know. Some kind of... Stick sticking out of it. You know, they're pretty ugly from the side, but from the front? Yeah, nice looking plane. Oh. Um, all right, uh, we've lost our course a little bit because we've been fiddling around, so back to 75 degrees. In fact, the next one's 75 degrees as well, so... We won't know when it's switched over, except for we'll just do it by time. Like a smart person. Lol, if we can find one. Perhaps one of the passengers in the back of this thing. Hello, anyone know what they're doing? This is your captain speaking. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Have a good flight. them putting that road on those hills to the right there or is there a road like that over the edge like that <laughs> that'd be that'd be a cool uh airy little road along the cliffs right, we've done three minutes of 347 i don't know which one's waikawa bay i don't have my google map up i'm doing this without that crutch but it must be one of these. Surely. Alright. 
320, uh, 327, uh, 330. I may have skipped a few there. Just keeping everyone on their toes, of course. Look at this little town. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, we've done 347-ish. Let's reset our clock. So we want 75 degrees still for 1 minute 47. Rahotia, maintaining course, cross over land again and fly just to the south of Mount Kahikatea, 2,100 feet above sea level. Gain a visual on Rahotia, a peak that stands 2,005 feet above sea level and fly over its summit. Yes, ma'am. Rahotia. Hmm, excellent. Absolutely lovely. Must be this one in front of us, I think. Or the one we just flew over, not sure. One of these hills, one of these mountains, is Rahotia. And we're all the richer for it. Must be this one. With this huge path up to it. Alright, there we go. 80 degrees for 8 minutes 15. Grab a drink. Grab a look out the window. Chill out a bit. We're headed to Red Rocks. Continue on course, flying over the Cook Strait. Nearing the coast of the Wellington area, gain a visual on Tikopahau Hill. 1500 feet above sea level. Just to the south of Tikopahau lies Devil's Gate, a rugged beach that a rugged beach head that overlooks the Cook Strait. The Red Rocks, an ancient volcanic formation with a deep crimson hue, lies just to the east of Devil's Gate. Interesting. All right, 80 degrees. Chill out. Enjoy the serenity. And then how long is the next... The next segment will be the landing. It's a minute 28 from Red Rocks. Okay, we'll be able to read that out. That's probably time. Possibly. We shall see. We'll see as we get a bit closer. We'll see how it feels. Looking at the picture of Wellington International... It's between two bays. It's huge. And, um... Yeah, we should be able to find that pretty easily, I imagine. I'm just thinking, we went... I visited Christchurch and we did some of the South Island and, uh... Then we went to Wellington. Did we fly to Wellington? from Christchurch or did we catch a boat or something I don't have any recollection we must have flown I don't remember catching a boat Just chill. Well, why do you want to turn left? Hmm? Why is a left turn the thing you want to do right now? You plane. You utter plane. Mm -hmm. 
Turn into a northeast heading. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but it just reminds me of uh, that old joke. When is Dracula not a Dracula or not a vampire or something? When he turns into a corner. <laughs> Terrible joke. But every time I see someone use the phrase turn into, that's all I can think of. When is a bush trip not a bush trip? When it turns into a northeast heading. Lol. A YouTube message. You lose all your viewers at this time in the timestamp in the YouTube video. Yeah. That's because I'm doing bad jokes. I love it. I love it. Everyone leaves. But I love me some bad jokes. So is it, I thought this was an island, but it might actually just be a peninsula. That doesn't seem to be where we're headed, though. We've done four minutes of eight minutes, so we're halfway there. Oh, oh, living on a prayer, as you know. You can't say halfway there without singing Bon Jovi. Dims the rules. to 79 dudes just I'm a little bit I won't say concerned but my uh, concern is that that's the red rocks in front of us actually this closer peninsula and that then Wellington Airport is just behind that hill we won't have time to once we've seen it it'll be time to be landed on it you know what I mean Going 40 degrees for a minute 28 from the Red Rocks, wherever they are, if we can even see them. So that's slightly to the left. Hmm. Interesting, unless it's somehow in part of all these rocks here. Can't be. Must be beyond that peninsula. Windy Wellington. It's definitely not on that hill, so it must be beyond the thing. We've done six and a half minutes, so we've got like a minute and three quarters to go before we're meant to turn somewhere. I don't know which ones are the red rocks. We've got Rug Devil's Gate, which is a rugged beach, so that must be the beach just off our left wing. And then to Copperhow is a hill. That must be it just going off the screen to the left now. And Red Rocks, an ancient volcanic formation, lies just to the east. And you'd think they'd show up as red if they're red. Maybe they're not. They're called the Red Rocks, but they're not red. How outrageous. I'm um, seeing City over on the left there, so yep. The airport must be in this bay somehow. Said, oh, look, it's a wind farm. 
Good. Now, especially as this is such a windy part of the world, apparently. Wellington known very much as a windy place. I don't recall if it was or not. I don't recall anything, really. It was 20-ish years ago. I don't remember yesterday. All right, where's this airport then? We're about to hit eight minutes. We should be able to see it once we get past this hill. I don't see any red rocks. Where's this Gagnabbit Airport? It must be in this bay. Looks like it's in a weird spot. Like I said, there's water on both sides of it. Or both ends of it, actually. It must be hidden in amongst all of that. There's a couple little hills next to it, yeah. Alright, so if that's that hill there on the picture... That means... Yeah, I think the runway must be that... Bit there. Alright, slow it right down. Alright, we don't slow it right down because it panics. Oh no, because of the gear. No, no, we need to slow it right down. Well, I'm not putting the gear down until... Until we can, you know? Trim back a bit. Need to lose some speed. I'm not quite sure exactly... Oh, look, that must be the airport there. I just can't really see where the runway is or which direction it goes. Let me get a few flaps down. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, but let's hope it doesn't rip the plane in two. I'm just going to assume that the runway is basically perpendicular to us. A couple more flaps. I should be able to get a gear now down. There, a uh, gear now down. Get out, gear down now. All right, bit of power because we're a little bit slow. sure when to turn. Oh, we're getting way too slow now. We can keep it at 100. Keep it at 100-ish. Alright, let's start looking and seeing if we can find where the actual runway is. Because in order to land on a runway, step one is know where it is. There it is. There, there's some flashing lights. I recognize those buildings there from the picture. And so we need to land it there. And of course, yesterday I said I knew what I was doing. So, you know, Murphy's Law and the Law of the Universe, really, is going to say, no, you don't. Good luck with this. I haven't got all my flaps down. Let's get all the flaps down. You know, watch us, uh, us, watch me just fuck this up. I mean, uh, and yes, I'm trying to de-jinx it by by claiming I'm going to mess it up, but, uh, you know, now I've de-jinxed the jinx. I'm not in, is Wellington all over there in the left there? Okay, coming a bit low. Here a bit more. Try to keep it at 100. There we go. Nice and easy. Gigantic runway. I think we can probably power it right down now. We've got enough oomph to, to get there, possibly. Carefully, carefully. Easy, easy. Bounce a bit. Bounce a bit more. Do some more bouncing. Try and get the back wheel down. Try to get the brakes on. Do a bit of drifting, a bit of sliding. A bit more drifting and sliding. A little bit more. Still can't get this back wheel down for some reason. There we go. Turn, plane, turn. God oh, dang. 
Look, it was fun flying a DC-3, but I may never do that again unless it's on a bush trip somewhere. Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed that. That's the full bush trip. Thank you for watching. Thank you for existing. See you in a few days. Or goodbye.